Hi everyone, today I'd like to show you the proper way to prepare your canvas for an oil painting. And we're going to start today, uh, this will specifically be about how to prepare a pre-stretched canvas um, from the store that's already stretched on the stretcher bars. Uh, first thing, real quick, what I'd like to say is what I look for when I'm purchasing one of these um, pre-stretch canvases as I do as best I can. I know a lot of them that we buy now have a plastic cover. Some even have a piece of paper and advertising. Um, but if you can see through that, all that is to really try to take a good look at the canvas itself. Um, there are flaws in, in them occasionally and to make sure you don't see any threads, flaws, or big bumps uh, on the surface at all. I also try to press the corners and make sure the stretcher bars aren't uneven and don't have a big um, discrepancy here in the corners. Uh, you know, most all the companies now with a little bit better canvases are stapling on the backs, rather the side, and that is much better, especially for your framing. Another thing I try to do is I'll find a flat surface at the store or maybe even the floor and lay the canvas straight down make sure it's not already uh, warped and a sign of a very good uh, canvas too is if again it's difficult with that plastic on there but if you can thump with your finger and it sounds like a nice tight drum echo you know that canvas is on there um, really nice and tight it has a little bit of an, a deep echo if it's just a thud when you flick your finger, or if it's just a thud like a, a dead uh, basketball sound, then uh, you know it's too loose. Either if you have already have it at home, you're going to have to try to shrink it or, um, or purchase, a, purchase a different one if you can. And we'll talk about how to shrink them another time. Uh, and the other thing is on these stretcher bars, this is not a good example because it's kind of a small, um, a small size. But you want as much lift as possible between that wooden stretcher bar and your canvas fabric. And I don't know if you'll be able to see that on the camera, but there's a bit of a shadow here, and that is there's probably a an eighth or a quarter of an inch space on this one between the canvas and the bar. And that is good and we do want as much space as we can get right there. If it's touching or if it's very sharp edge and the canvas is laying uh, touching against that wood, then when we're painting on the outside and you go like this on the edge, you can feel that frame around the perimeter and that will show on your painting and once you have it in there, it will not come off and it looks terrible. So, well, it'll ruin the painting. So we want to be sure and if you can, try to find one that has a good amount of lift and if it's uh, stretched properly and nice and tight, it should not hit that wooden bar at all. Okay, so that's enough on the canvas. And what we're going to do, you know, there's a proper way to really uh, prepare that canvas for oil paint. Not always necessary for acrylic paints because they are already water-based. But even these pre-primed canvases that you purchase from the store, uh, they say double primed, pre primed, triple primed. That's done in a factory. It's sprayed on very thin, very fast. It is not an adequate seal to protect that fabric from oil paint. Uh, oil paint is very acidic, it has a lot of chemicals, and you're using the terpenoids. Uh, your mineral spirits and lots of other products that will seep through and they will rot that canvas in time. Um, if they don't rot it, they'll crack or become uneven in color and do lots of other things. So we want to take the steps necessary to really ensure the longevity of that paint uh, the longevity of the canvas itself and make it as archivally uh, safe 
as we can. So um, to do that, we're going to apply a gesso or a ground, it's referred to sometime, and it will prime that surface. And what it does is it seals, it will stiffen, and it will add a tooth to the surface. So um, the first thing is, again, we want to seal it to seal that oil paint from the canvas. We want to stiffen this surface as much, much as possible because oil paint can crack. It doesn't have the polymers in it like acrylic does. And we want to add a little toothiness uh, so our paint will be accepted onto the canvas. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, I do find that, um, you know, there's different kinds of gessos uh, on the market. I have found uh, the very inexpensive ones are quite watery and probably don't put as nice of a layer on as you would like. So normally I look for a good bargain, but on gesso I think you do need a, a pretty good uh, quality product. And I, you know, some artists just pour it straight on the canvas. Other ones will pour it into a container. All you need is just a real inexpensive bristle house brush, something stiff. And we're just going to brush it on as smoothly as possible. It really depends on your style of painting. Some people want more texture, um, but if you're looking to make a painting to start out at least smooth, you want to get that on there as smoothly as possible, brushing in all directions. And with these brushes, a lot of times the bristles break and come right off so easily. If you get one on there, just come along and flick it out and continue on. So we're going to, I crisscross, or you can very slowly, then a very light hand, come back across and get all the streaks and brush marks out. I don't want any ridges. Also, you'd have to remember you want to do all the sides. In the corners, and even on the back. You know, your oil paint does go around around it might drip or whatever so just it's easy enough just go ahead do all your edges your back and everything just keep that nice and smooth we're going to let that dry for about an hour um, you'll know the first coat always dries faster and uh, when you come back you can touch it and it won't be tacky. If you feel that it's still cool, that means there's still water. Uh, gesso is a water-based acrylic paint or primer. And uh, so if it's still cool to the touch, then you know it's still wet and you need to wait a little bit longer. So we have one dry here. So this has dried about an hour. And what we're going to do is I have these, I like these uh, sandpaper little pads here that you get at the Home Improvement Store. Uh, you can use, you know, regular sandpaper, but if you do, you need to put a little sponge, wrap it around a sponge or something, so you have even distribution and no pressure, finger pressure points. But with this um, sandpaper, just very, very lightly sand it. And I'm not hardly putting any pressure at all, but it is enough to feel that all those little nubs and little teeny specks that were a little rough are gone. But I didn't, you know, sand it, um, you know, like you would consider regular sanding. And then I'm going to take another brush or a cloth or something and just get that dust from the sanding off of there. And now we're going to come back and we're going to do another coat of the gesso. Now this time, you know, if you went in one direction, make sure you do go in the opposite. Again, I kind of crisscross to make sure I get really good coverage. Sometimes 
sides do the sides and the back again and I'll just do that little bit just to show you and at the end I do with a very I kind of hold it at the end so the brush is just ever like a feather drag it across in the opposite direction I left it last time and get all the paint ridges out make sure it's all smooth and sometimes if you hold it up to the light you can really tell from the glistening if you've missed any spots so again we're gonna let that sit for an hour sometimes the second coat takes a little longer because you've already established that first seal and again when that's finished you'll feel the roughness there come back very lightly sand it uh, most people or manufacturers recommend two, at least two passes maybe four coats if you're gonna be applying more oil paint um, and some people you know depending on if you like a smooth surface or a rough surface uh, maybe you like four coats if you like a little bit smoother painting surface uh, I know sometimes I buy a canvas that has um, more textured canvas than I normally like and I'll put more coats of gesso on it to kind of fill those in and give me a little smoother uh, canvas so the very last coat wherever you decide to finish that we do not sand the last coat okay uh, that's because we don't want those dust particles setting on there when we go and put our first application of oil paint the only other thing I want to mention right now is uh, I did this all in white for if you wanted to gesso um, and start with your canvases in white but for some paintings or some artists do prefer to have a colored foundation ground gray or some other warm color so you can into your gesso I have a little tub of gesso here you can put acrylic not oil paint acrylic um, squirt a, a bit of color in there mix it up really well so it applies evenly when you put that down if I hear is black acrylic I could squirt a little in there to make a gray if I wanted a gray uh, prime base or even an acrylic uh, burnt sienna or raw umber or burnt umber to make a neutral warm tone on that whole canvas so you can add acrylics to gesso and the other thing is uh, just remember you can never gesso over an already completed or halfway completed oil painting once you've started with your oil paint we cannot go back and put a water-based paint on top so that's how we need to prepare it and then please do remember this does have to sit after it's totally done at least two days so it's really really bone dry before we start applying the oil paint so I hope that helped you and just let me know if you have any questions thanks so much bye bye